Good morning, friends. We are um, a little bit late. We've had some technical difficulties this morning, but we are going to um, go ahead and get started. I want to honor your time, but I'm so glad you could join us again. I have my folder here. It has all of my papers inside of it. I'm going to go ahead and screen share so that we can see what it is that um, we are looking at, what things we should gather. Right, so we have the human body essay text set. We have our rainforest uh, outline and text set. We have our transition word paper. You guys may have also done this in your um, notebook or journal and just have it on um, uh, paper. And then I have some extra papers just for me to use um, as needed. Now today we're going to go over our middle paragraph. So these are what the bulk of our um, essay is going to be. Um, it's, it's all of the information that's about the human body where I'm going to explain the topics that I have chosen um, to write about, right? It's all the information that's in our text set. Remember, we've done the I paragraph. We did that um, last week, maybe. We have our hook. We have our um, topics that we're going to talk about. And then we have a closing sentence. It's just kind of a general idea about um, our, our central idea, the main topic, again, human body. And so I'm going to leave this right here. We're going to write our um, middle paragraph about that um, on that sheet of paper today. So I'm going to go ahead and move, remove my paper clips. We also wrote our T sentences. Remember, we said we have a little checklist that we use. We always want to include a transition word whenever we're going through our middle paragraph. So I said this time we're just going to pick first, second, and third. You can certainly make it fancier. But as we're in the beginning stages of learning, we want to just tell the reader that we're moving through um, this essay. We're moving through our topics and we're transitioning from one paragraph to the next. Um, first, the human body has two lungs. So when I look at my essay, if I'm going to write my whole essay, this is my I paragraph. And then when I want to come write my next um, paragraph, remember, we're always going to indent. Okay, so I'm going to um, copy that sentence. And I'm not sure if you can see this color or not. So I might have to go over it. First, the human body. First, the human body has two lungs. Now, that's my topic sentence, okay? For my topic sentence, or for each of my middle paragraphs, excuse me, I want to have a couple of things. So let me write them right here. And we can, again, use this as a little checklist, the same way as we had our little checklist that we could look back at when writing our T sentence, I can do the same thing. So I want to have a transition or my T sentence. I want to have three sentences for A and three sentences for B. And because we are, we're a couple minutes late on time this morning, I'm going to try to go real fast. So remember, your teachers are going to get this as a recording. If um, a small group needs to replay this, um, you can do that at a later time. But I'm going to go kind of fast, okay? We know that when we're talking about this, uh, the lungs, that this paragraph is only going to be about the lungs, and the first part is going to be information about breathing in, and the second part is going to be about breathing out. So I already have my topic sentence. I'm going to come into my essay, and I'm going to look for information about, for T1A, about breathing in. I can see right here that this whole paragraph is about breathing in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to find three sentences that teach about or tell how the lungs breathe in, right? The, um, our rubrics for informative writing say that we are explaining, that we are showing, teaching, telling, um, that we're connecting our ideas together. So I want to make sure that it makes sense. So I read right here that air goes through a series of branches in your lung. Oh, it first starts at your trachea, your windpipe. I could also call that my throat. The air goes through a series of branches. 
called all these big words. It finally reaches air sacs. It gives oxygen. I want to be sure to even use some of these big words as I'm writing. So I have a second color because I'm going to show you just like we color coded our I paragraph. I'm going to color code my um, T1 paragraph. So I have my text set in front of me. So I'm always looking back at my text set. So I'm looking right here in paragraph two. So first, the human body has two lungs. Now I'm going to um, teach about those two lungs. They, these lungs, let's say breathe in air and I'm gonna look back at my text. It goes, these lungs breathe in air. Oh, I'm gonna change my word from and to which. These lungs breathe in air which go to various branches in your lungs. Hold on, I said lungs earlier, so I don't want to say that. These lungs breathe in air, which go to various branches called, instead of saying lungs again, let's just call their names, bronchi and bronchioles. B-R-O-N-C-H-I and B-R-O-N-C-H-I-O-L, bronchioles. I hope I'm saying that correctly. These lungs breathe in air, which go to the various branches called bronchi and bronchioles. Now I'm going to keep going. I've, I've told you that we have two lungs. Now I'm telling you what we, uh, what those lungs do. They carry oxygen. To your heart. I'm going to end my sentence and then I'm going to tell one last thing, teach you one last thing, that the heart sends the blood out to all the cells in the body. Remember, I'm still getting this information from paragraph two. Your heart sends this Let's call it fresh oxygen. Fresh oxygen to all the cells in your body. Now, I'm finished with my 3A, okay? Just like I had a checklist for this, I have a checklist. Remember, I wrote it right here on my outline. Let's check to make sure I have three sentences. So I already know that I have my um, first sentence is my T sentence, right? First, the human body. That's my, my central idea. I'm what I'm talking about in my introduction, my conclusion, and all through my body paragraphs. But this body paragraph is about my lungs. Oops, sorry. My lungs. Remember, that's my T1. And then I'm going to take um, my time and I'm going to make sure I have three sentences that not only tell what my lungs are doing, but it's teaching why um, it's important, why I chose that information. I'm going to elaborate um, on the lungs. So these lungs breathe in air, which go to various branches called bronchii and bronchioles. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. If, if I'm not, hopefully you can forgive me. Somebody can teach me later. I know that I ended my sentence. I have a period there. Remember, we have to have to remember our fourth and fifth grade skills about ending sentences. They carry oxygen to your heart. There's my period again. So I know I have two sentences. Your heart sends this fresh oxygen to all the cells in your body. And there's my period. I just covered it up with my um, highlighter, but I know I have three sentences. So I can come right back to my outline and I can say, yep, I have my T sentence. Yep, I have three sentences about point A, which is breathing in. Now what do I need to do? 
That's right, I need to go to my point B. I'm gonna write three sentences about point B. So remember, when we were coding our text, we were boxing and labeling so that any time I was ready, I said, oh my goodness, I forgot what I was writing about. I can't remember. I come back and I say, okay, I'm gonna to go to T1B. And I look for that where I have boxed and labeled and I see that I have T1B right here. So I never have to worry if I've, I've made a great outline, a great map, I've given myself the support that I need throughout um, the writing. So here we are at the, the um, 3B sentences. It says, when you breathe out, just the opposite happens. Oxygen is used, blood brings carbon dioxide back through the capillaries into the alveoli. The air from the alveoli now contains carbon dioxide. This air travels in reverse through the bronchioles and bronchi. It travels up the trachea, bumping out through your nose and mouth. So I want to explain that in a few sentences. I don't want to copy the whole paragraph. Remember, I can steal some words, borrow some words from that, but I want to be able to tell what breathing out does and then teach about why that's important. So I am going to take a third color. And one of the things that's important, boys and girls, as you are getting uh, more sophisticated in your writing, is a lot of the rubrics that we use um, when grading fourth and fifth grade um, expository or informative um, essays is we want to make sure that we use transitional strategies, not just transition words. We're going to use transitional strategies within and among our paragraphs. Um, so that means that when I'm going from point A to point B, I don't just start. I might use another um, transition word like the word also or um, uh, to accompany this or, or in contrast to. That's the one I'm going to pick today because Breathing in is the opposite. Remember, I read that in my text. So that's a contrast. You probably remember that from your reading words. That's a contrast. So I wanna show that contrast. So I'm gonna use a transitional strategy in the middle of my paragraph, and I'm going to say, in contrast, Now, what am I teaching about? I'm, I'm teaching about breathing out this time. In contrast, breathing out is the opposite. It, let's say is just the opposite. I might want to add a word there. I'm thinking my sentence might not be complete. And this is a good time for me to tell you that sometimes you might want to add sentences, I mean words. Um, and so I want you to be able to leave yourself some room to kind of put a carrot and insert a word um, and make sure you're still putting a paragraph, I mean a period, but I want to leave myself a little bit of space because I don't know if that sentence is, I'm editing as I'm going. Remember last week I said, um, or the week before, like I'm always looking back, I'm always editing, rereading, making sure, goodness, did I remember to put all of my words inside of that sentence. So I'm going to just put it out a little bit in case I want to add something. In contrast, breathing out is just the opposite. After the oxygen is used, our blood changes it, changes the oxygen, changes it to carbon dioxide. which, let's see, travels, remember this is all about um, the air going in and around our lungs, so it travels, the oxygen is used, our blood changes it to carbon dioxide, which travels back through the capillaries and bronchii. We can steal a couple of those words. Am I spelling it? One P, two L's, capillaries and 
bronchiae. After the oxygen is used, our blood changes it to carbon dioxide, which travels back through the capillaries and bronchiae. Finally, it comes out of our mouths. Okay. So I have taken all of the information here in my paragraph um, three that I had um, for T1B, and I can go back and I can do the same thing if I go back to my checklist. Right? I want to see, do I have three sentences for point B about breathing out? So let's get our highlighter. And again, you don't have to use um, the same colors I'm using, but you can also underline them. Sometimes um, in the classroom, I would have my kids use um, crayons and just underline them. That's okay too. So here's one sentence. In contrast, breathing out is just the opposite. And remember, right there is my period. After the oxygen is used, our blood changes it to carbon dioxide, which travels back through the capillaries and bronchiae. That's a long sentence, isn't it? That's a lot of information that I taught my reader. I have another period. Now I'm explaining the last step that says, finally, it comes out of our mouths. So I have three sentences, don't I? That's right. So we can come right here and put a check beside our third sentence, our 3B sentences. Now I can move on to my next topic. I'm finished with that paragraph. We're gonna add some things to it over the next coming weeks. But right now we're gonna go piece by piece and step by step and we're gonna move on to T2. This is all about um, the brain. And so remember, we said that we want to make sure we always put our T sentence. So let's look at what our T sentence is for the brain. Second, the brain performs every action in your body. I have my checklist here that I have a transition word. I've included the prompt, the central message or idea that my, my um, prompt asked me to talk about. And then my topic, my second topic, the, the thing that I found a lot of information about was the brain. So now I'm going to, let me move that. Remember, I always have to indent on a paragraph. Let's say second, the brain performs every action. in your body. All right, we have five minutes. Let's see how much I can do. So that's my T sentence. If I come back and I, I have a little checklist right here, like I made a mistake, so I had to loop that in together. So I have my um, T sentence, my 3A and 3B I need to check. I already have my T sentence. Remember we wrote that last week. I can even go ahead and highlight it because I remember that I already included it. Now, remember, we have highlighted what it is that we um, are going to write about in T2. So if I get stuck, if I get scared, if I get nervous, writing is not my best subject, I have a map, I have an outline that I can go back to. I'm going to talk about the brain and how the uh, cerebrum and cerebellum work and how the brainstem works. So I have boxed and labeled and I can come into the human brain tech set, and I know that this is about T2A, and I know that this is about T2B. So I have all of this information. I'm going to go ahead and get, let's see, I used blue next. I'm going to stick with those same colors and see how much we can get through. All right. First, I'm going to tell about the cerebrum and cerebellum. So second, the brain performs every action in your body. Let's name them. The cerebrum, and I am going to um, use this sentence right here. It's the thinking part of the brain. The cerebrum is the thinking part and is, it says right here, the biggest. You can see that in, let's see, what paragraph is it? Paragraph six, if you're looking at the text, and is the biggest. I put my period, that's one sentence. It has 
two halves, right? So I included that. And then I'm going to say it says that scientists believe the right half helps you think about music, colors, and shapes. They believe the left helps um, you with math and your speech. So I'm going to explain that, but remember, I can't I can't take anything directly from the text without um, quoting it. So we're not to that part yet. So I'm going to use my own words, and I'm going to say the right side. is more, I'm going to use a big fancy word, inclined to arts. Let's write to the arts. And the left to, let's say, math and science. So I can tell more things about that as I um, go back through and I start editing and as we learn together about a few more um, things that we can go into. But I need to write something about the cerebellum also. The cerebellum is a lot smaller. And let's tell what its function is. And it helps keep your balance. Look at that. I looked and very quickly it says it helps you stand up, keep your balance, help your muscles work together. You wouldn't even be able to ride a bike. That's crazy. The cerebellum is a lot smaller and keeps you balanced. All right, let's B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D. All right, let's check to make sure we have three sentences. All right, so I have, um, I need to look for three sentences about the cerebrum and cerebellum. So let's get my highlighter. We did this in blue. The cerebrum is the thinking part and is the biggest. There's my period. Then it says it has two halves. The right side is more inclined to the arts and the left to math and science. Now look. That's three sentences right there, but I had so much information that I actually was able to add a fourth sentence. That's okay. The more information that you have, the better. So I am going to also highlight that one in blue. Now, boys and girls, in order to honor your time, it's we're almost out of time. I'm going to go ahead and give you the directions for what I want you to do with your teacher during your class time today. I want you, I can go in here and I can check off that yes, I have three sentences about my point A. I want you to finish three sentences about point B, which is the brainstem, and I want you to do T3. Okay, that means that you need your text set, you need your outline so you can keep on track, and you need your paper, okay? You also want to make sure that you highlight. So um, my next color would be pink because I need another piece of paper. So I would write three more sentences about point B and then go to my T3. Remember, I'm going to indent. I'm going to start with my T sentence because that starts every middle paragraph is my T sentence. And then I'm going to write three sentences about why it's important to protect my lungs and three sentences about why it's important to protect my brain. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. You guys have a great week.